once asked to John Fu in what you need to believe in order to practice meditation. He said, all you need to believe is the principle of action, karma. And most of us in the West, when we hear the teaching on karma, freeze up. We start thinking about all the bad things we did in the past. We get scared of the idea of all those things are going to come back at us. And I'm always amazed at the resistance to this teaching. But it's good to look at how the Buddha taught karma. When he introduces the topic, he talks about two things. He doesn't talk about the bad things you've done in the past. He talks about good things. Generosity. He says generosity really is something real. It's a good thing to be generous. And that's one of the topics of meditation. When things are going dry in the meditation and everything seems to come to a stop. Remind yourself of the ways you've been generous in the past. The other topic the Buddha uses to discuss or to introduce the topic of karma is gratitude. Think of all the people who've helped you in the past, the ones who volunteered to help without your doing something nice to them first. They came out of the goodness of their hearts to help you. And that sort of action is worth emulating. You realize how much it helped you to be fed by them, or to be clothed by them, or to be taught or helped in whatever way it was. And this, combined with the principle of generosity, should inspire you to want to do things for other people. Sort of pass on the help. So when the Buddha teaches karma, he doesn't teach the negative side to begin with. He teaches the positive side to emphasize that that's what you want to make the most of. As for things you've done in the past that he says are unskillful, he says you don't want to get tied up in remorse. Remind yourself, okay, that was unskillful, and you can't go back and undo what you did. And Tying yourself up with thoughts of guilt and remorse is not going to help either. So what you do is simply res resolve. You're not going to repeat that mistake in the future. That's all you have to do. That's all that any human being can be asked to do. In order to strengthen that resolve, one of the gifts you can give is to develop thoughts of goodwill. Because the more goodwill you feel for yourself and good feel for the people around you, the easier it is to, to be generous, to be helpful, both to yourself and other people. So you simply start with that thought, may I be happy, like we chatted just now. I was once talking with one of the ones from, nuns from Chithurst. I happened to mention that we had, we also chanted both in English and in Pali at the monastery. And she said, oh, how do you chant? And I said, Aung Sukhi Toho, may, may I be happy? And she practically fell out of her chair laughing. They translated in a much more refined way, may I abide in well-being. I must admit, I like, may I be happy. It gets, straight, gets right to the point. And it's an unabashed thought. You're not embarrassed to say, may I be happy. Because when you think about what true happiness is, it's not a selfish thing. May I find the resources inside to develop true happiness. And if you can make yourself happy by being generous and developing thoughts of gratitude, that's a perfectly harmless thing. If you can make yourself happy by thinking thoughts of goodwill for yourself and other people, that's a harmless thing.
So start with yourself and then spread thoughts of goodwill to people you love, people who are close to your heart. And then gradually spread out to people you like but you don't know so well, people you're more or less neutral about, and then even people you don't like. Remind yourself that if everyone in the world could find true happiness within, if they could find happiness by being generous and developing thoughts of gratitude, the world would be a much better place. Those horrible people that you really don't like would be a lot less horrible if they could be truly happy. And spread thoughts of goodwill to people you don't even know. And not just people, living beings of all kinds. On levels you can see, on levels you can't see. Be generous with your goodwill. And if you find yourself resisting thoughts of goodwill, ask yourself, why would I wish for anyone to suffer? What would I gain from it? So we're not, we're not spreading out nice pink clouds of thought to smother the world. Part of this practice is to dig up places where you resist the idea of wanting somebody to be happy. You can pose the question, why would I resist that? What would I gain from their suffering? What good would be served by their suffering? And when you can dig out your resentments and realize that they're not really worth carrying around, then you can extend the gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't hear mean that you're going to forget the wrong done by other people or you're going to love them, simply that you're not going to pose them any danger. You're not going to get revenge. And that right there takes a huge load off the mind. I mean, the resentments you carry around really do burden you. They really do irritate the mind. It's interesting when the Buddha is talking about how to deal with thoughts of hatred. The example he gives, or the analogy he gives, is of someone going through the desert, hot, thirsty, and tired. And they come across a little bit of water, but the problem is the water is in a cow's footprint, not much water at all. And you know that if you scooped your hand down to get the water, you'd, the water would become muddy and you couldn't drink it. So you very carefully have to bring your lips down to the water and slurp it up. The analogy here is of the people you dislike, and the water there is what little goodness they have. It may not be much, but you look for it. And notice your position is not that of a judge passing judgment on other people. You're hot and thirsty and tired. And you need to see their goodness to nourish your own heart. Because if you look around the human race and all you see is selfishness and cruelty, and there is a lot of it there, it's not to deny it, but if you focus on that, your heart begins to shrivel and dry. And nothing's accomplished by that. You've got to look for the goodness in other people. And in the case where you look at somebody and you look and look and look and you can't find any goodness at all, then you've got to feel compassion for them because they're just creating a really bad future for themselves. Again, the images of someone walking across the desert. You find someone who's sick and incapacitated out in the middle of the desert. And your immediate reaction is, well, gee, it would be good if someone could come along and help. You may not be the person who's able to help them, but you do wish for that person to end his suffering, even when the suffering is self-inflicted. And 
suffering, as often happens when people inflict suffering on themselves. They go around and they have a little extra left to spare, so they try to inflict suffering on other people. It would be a lot better if they learned how to stop suffering in this way. If they could find true happiness inside, they would stop inflicting the suffering on others. So when you spread thoughts of goodwill, it's not just like a, a goodwill spread. The purpose of this is to get you to examine your thoughts about happiness. Realizing that in this world where action really is important, okay, actions of generosity, actions of goodwill, actions of gratitude are very important. They're what enables us to live. They're the water for us as we go through this desert. So learn to focus on your good actions. Jaka Anusati, recollection of the times you've been generous. Sila Anusati, recollection of times that you've stuck to your principles, even in the face of the temptation to throw them out. Reflect on these things and remember that your strength lies there. And the happiness that comes from that reflection is not like the happiness that comes from, say, recollecting a movie you once saw or a relationship you once had, because that kind of happiness is, can turn very bitter over time, especially when you realize that the relationship has ended. Whatever the happiness was, it's gone, and you can't bring it back. That kind of happiness burns in the memory. But the happiness of the times when you were good or when times when people really helped you and were good to you out of the goodness of their hearts, that happiness doesn't end. Each time you reflect on it, it's a happy thought. So that should spur you to want to be more generous, want to stick to your principles. And this is why we think thoughts of goodwill, because it makes it easier for us to be generous and stick to our principles. To be not, to be harmless. And as you think about these things, it brings some nourishment to the mind. When the mind is nourished, then it's a lot easier to settle down here in the present moment. Because you've changed your attitude about happiness. You're willing to allow yourself to have some happiness here. Because it's the ideal kind of happiness. Just sitting here breathing, the way you relate to your breath makes all the difference in the world. You can make yourself miserable. You can put yourself in a straitjacket, but you don't have to. Think of the breath coming in and out all the pores of your body. Think of the breath energy untangling, the work up from your toes, up through your feet, your legs, up through your torso. You can learn to relate to the breath energy in a different way. And you find that the less suffering you cause yourself here, and it's totally needless suffering, the lot easier it is to be good to other people. So think about these things. Develop the right attitude towards happiness, the right attitude to this, the principle of karma. Karma can be a means to happiness, if you understand how to use it properly, how to use the idea of karma, the principle of action and result. It all comes down to the mind. If you can develop good qualities in the mind, you notice that certain ways of thinking are skillful that take burdens off the mind, that help nourish the mind, okay, encourage those ways of thinking. Because if you don't encourage them, you'll develop other habits in the mind. It may seem artificial to focus on these habits, but then the construction of the present moment is always something artificial. There's a large element of your intention in every experience, so you might as well intend to do it well. Construct healthy and nourishing thoughts. You have it within your power to do so. 
So try to make the most of that opportunity.